to uh, be part of this, everyone. I'm glad that you've been able to join us and I hope I can answer questions for you. Um, so as Alicia said, my name is Janice Cron. I'm the Assistant Superintendent in Garden Valley School Division. And uh, also in the Zoom with us is uh, Joanne Dirksen, who is another super assistant superintendent here in Garden Valley School Division. Joanne will be available if we need some answers from her. I'm officially in charge of programs and curriculum, and Joanne is in charge of student services. So that would be um, working with students with special needs or um, clinicians who are needed, those things. So I'm uh, happy to chat. Alicia, do you want me to just talk about um, what's going to be happening as based on the Premier's announcement the other day? Yes, that'd be great. I think it would be important to talk about what's happening come June 1st, okay. where things have been, um, why things have been the way that they have in the sense of changes, and uh, what does June 1st look like? Okay, so um, I'm assuming most of you are parents or you have uh, close relatives that you're probably helping take care of. Um, you are all aware that the Premier announced in March that schools would be closed and classes would be suspended, but there would be learning that would be happening remotely. So our school division chose to be able to provide lessons to our children in K-8 to or kindergarten to grade 8 by sending learning packages once every two weeks. Um, so each school took care of arranging that and we sent them uh, on the school buses for a few reasons. One reason is because it's hundreds of packages that we had to send and to send them in somebody's van, that would take a lot of trips. So we chose to send them in a bus. Um, that meant we could just take one trip for a certain area. And the other reason was because um, being at home and doing school is not normal for most of us. And so seeing the school bus provides one very small normal for our children and we've heard a lot of comments from children and parents uh, really appreciating seeing the bus every two weeks it just feels a bit more like school that way um, and we will be continuing that uh, the premier has announced as of this last wednesday that officially all classes are suspended which means they won't be happening in schools till the end of june um, so we'll restart in september in Whatever way we're not quite sure, that'll be up to the Premier. Um, so we have a plan in place, um, but the remote learning packages will still go home for K to eight students. If you have a child in high school or a few children, um, most of those classes are taking place online, although there are some students who are receiving learning packages as well because they don't have access to the internet. So we wanna make sure that they all have the same learning opportunities. Um, obviously, learning at home is just not the same as in classes, uh, but we are doing our very best. Our parents and teachers are in constant communication, obviously at uh, the parents' choice, but our teachers are regularly trying to contact students um, at least once a week, if not more. And uh, we also have educational assistants who are also assisting with that. So lots of contact but we also wanna make sure that we're not overwhelming anybody with a lot of contact because that can become too much. And I know that we all have busy lives and this is a very strange way of doing things. So if we don't contact too much, but there is some contact, we're hoping that that will be a good mix of both. Um, I'm guessing lots of you are wondering what's going to be happening starting on Monday. Uh, the Premier announced that on June 1st, um, schools would be open, um, but they would be open for a limited access. And what that means is uh, up till now, we were supposed to have the schools closed, like the lock, closed doors, um, but the offices available via phone and email. Um, that will still be the case, but now we will have somebody monitoring the front doors. Some schools are going to have a doorbell so that you can go to the door and ring it and somebody can come and answer it. Some of them have an office right by the door, so they can easily come and answer it. Uh, some will have somebody sitting there to assist. Um, for kindergarten to grade eight schools, um, we're working really hard for all of our schools, K to 12, but we're trying to find the best way to get every child the opportunity to come in 
to school at least once uh, this month. And we're following the guidelines of the chief public health officer. So, um, and that is part of it is to keep them in a limited group. Um, we're going to have students invited to come in in small groups. If you look at any of the instructions from the government, um, the limited use of space means that in a classroom, a regular classroom, we can have uh, five or six students and a teacher. So that'll be, that'll provide us with physical distancing, make sure everybody is safe. Um, so what will happen is this coming week, um, the schools will be in contact with our families and they will arrange for an appointed time. So they'll make an appointment for your child to come to school. Um, kindergarten to grade eight will be there for half a day on a specific date. So you won't be able to just send your child on whichever date works for you uh, because we have to make sure that we're following all the guidelines. We wanna make sure that um, when they come, we have to make sure that they're healthy. Uh, we have to make sure that they wash their hands, um, have to do that regularly, keep physical distance. And you know that in a, a younger years classroom, they're using lots of toys and lots of um, pieces for math and different things like that. Well, in order to not share uh, COVID-19, we wanna make sure that they're not sharing. So in order to do that, we'll make sure that if there are any sharing or if there's any use of those materials, it's just one child for, per material so that there's no sharing there, if at all possible. And then those materials will be cleaned and this, the classroom will be cleaned at the end of that half day so that for the next time students come, the new students will have another clean space. Um, the high school will have uh, appointments made per child. If you know anything about high school, you know that your students have lots of teachers. And so it's not, it doesn't really work to just say they can come for half a day because they wouldn't be able to spend time with each of their teachers. So they will be asked to make appointments with their teacher uh, and then the teacher will meet them at the door, take care of all of those, um, keeping clean, washing hands, bringing them to their classroom. And that will be an opportunity for um, any kind of tutoring or uh, maybe a child is in grade 12 and they really wanna make sure that they're ready for graduation. So the teachers will be ready to do that just to help them make sure they're going to be graduating. Uh, we've got a lot of students who've been working very hard and so they also want to make sure that they have all of the the things in place to make sure they pass for our grade uh, kindergarten to grade eight students that'll be a little different because usually they just have one homeroom teacher and a few other teachers who come in and out but they will be um we're wanting to help them close out the year because they've been really close to their teachers and they wanna spend some last days with their teacher. And then we also want them to help um, meet the new teacher. So that's what our focus will be for kindergarten to grade eight. Um, finishing the year with their classroom teacher and meeting the new teacher. They will still get their packages sent to them, the learning packages. They'll, um, should have, they should have just gone out this week. And then their last package will go out two weeks from now. That will be the final package of learning. And then all of those packages will be picked up if they're complete. If they're not, that's fine. Um, they'll be picked up that very last, the week of June 19th. I think that's a Friday. I don't have a, ca a calendar here. But um, that week will be the final week. And then after that, teachers will complete the report cards, which will be sent home. I'm not sure if that covers everything. Maybe um, just to let you know, um, all of the things that we have in place for when the children come to school uh, is all following the public health officers guidelines um, which means we have to follow those limited um, numbers um, when coming into a building and you know the numbers that have been out there the 25 indoors and the 50 outdoors um, well we could certainly I guess have 50 kids outside but that doesn't give them the chance to meet their teacher and spend some time with them so this will be really nice just to give them that closure for the end of the school year and to meet their new teacher. Um, any staff or students who are ill will be asked to stay home. They're not to come to school. We'll check to make sure that they're healthy. Um, 
I don't know if you've been in a kindergarten to grade three or four classroom recently, but if you have, you know that we don't have desks at that grade anymore. So um, they only have tables. So we're gonna have to change what that looks like. They can't all just sit around one table because we have to keep them apart. So that will uh, be, each of the tables will be moved apart so that every child is safe. And then obviously lots of hand washing and um, doing our very best to keep everybody safe. And that's the most important thing for us. So oh, Joanne is also on there as well. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those. I uh, have you, uh, Joanne muted. I don't know if you wanna join in on video, Joanne. You're welcome to, there you are. Hi, nice welcome here. Nice to have you. Do you have uh, anything to add other than what Janice has mentioned? Janice, did you talk about transportation at all? Oh, no, I did not. No, you want to talk about that? Uh, just so that parents are aware, because they have seen school buses uh, in the community, uh, we will not be providing transportation during this time because the, um, the students are only coming in small groups and, and from various areas. So we haven't um, recruited all the bus drivers to run typical routes. Um, this schedule will look quite different and it's um, parents can choose to send their child or not to send their child. So mm -hmm. we will not be providing buses. We'll be relying on, on parents or, or students to um, provide their own transportation to the schools right. during this time. Yeah, and I guess another thing with that is um, your child is not required to attend. They are invited to attend. It's completely optional and we are not going to worry about attendance because that's not what this is about. This is about uh, bringing closure to this year and getting transition for next year. Right, and it's important to remember, this isn't, um, you're not missing out on a day of learning if, if they're not there. We understand if there's parents that, that don't feel comfortable, they don't feel uh, ready to send their child yet, we understand and no one should feel obligated. But I think it is nice for our children um, to have one opportunity before summer just to um, for an understanding that school is still a safe place um, right. that my teacher is okay my friends are okay and, uh, and to see each other again um, i think it it can maybe relieve some fears and, and anxieties yeah and i think a lot of children might appreciate just being there at least once just to know that when you come back in september i've been there it's just school like normal and um, Alicia, I see a question in the question and answer. Did you want me to answer that? Yeah, if you want to read it out loud and then you can yeah. answer that uh, for everyone. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, when our K-8 child attends school by appointment, how many children will be in the class and how many days a week does my child attend? That's great, two great questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first answer is, now of course, depending on the size of the classroom uh, or the class, sorry, the number of students in the classroom, but at the most, there would be six children in a classroom with an adult. And that way we can make sure that they are distanced properly. Uh, and this is based on uh, guidelines from the government and the public health officer to make sure that we're keeping that. Um, and, and how many days a week? That's a great question as well. Um, we have been asked that we get every child in or provide the opportunity for every child to be in school at least once. And that's what we'll do. We'll take each class and split them in into groups of five or six so that they can come in one time to meet with their teacher. So your child will only attend once um, and the school will let you know when that will be for your child. That's great. I have a few questions here that were kind of given prior to the event just so that we could uh, bring them up either someone could make it or it was a common question from our office. Um, so come September, does someone have a choice to keep their children home if they don't feel like it's safe to send them back to school? Oh, that's a great question. Um, a parent always has the choice to keep them at home. Um, our understanding, and of course this could change, right? We know that uh, the way everything has been working, things change from day to day. Um, our understanding is that school will be open in September. What that looks like, we don't know. Um, so if school is open regularly in September, then um, if a child isn't attending, I would assume that they will be homeschooling. Joanne, do you have anything to add to that? 
No, I think that would be, we would definitely be listening to our, our public health officer and our, our minister of education and they would direct us, in, but it, like Janice said, if schools are open, then um, students are welcome to attend and if parents choose not to send their child, then they can go to school. That's right. So there is another question on um, Zoom here. I don't know if you want to just read that over. Sure. The first question that I see there is we are newcomers and would like to know which school will they go to uh, and can we go to the school and have a look? Very good question. Um, when you're a newcomer, what you do is you call the school division office and we here will help you because where you're going to attend is based on where you, where you live. Um, so we can let you know which school and then you can phone the school and make arrangements um, depending on how many people they have in the building will depend on how you can go in and register, but they will certainly do their very best to provide a, a look through the school, um, meeting a teacher or at least the office people, uh, because certainly your children will want to know um, this year what it'll look like next year. That's that a great question. question. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'm just going to, uh, there is another question on Zoom here, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to add to a question that very is relatable to this one and maybe it would help answer. Uh, the school of choice affected through uh, COVID-19, knowing that kids are moving from school to school? No? No, you know, that's a really good question. Um, no, schools of choice still goes on just as normal, like the province. Um, we've asked that to make sure and the province has said, you know, the deadline is May 15th, and we follow all the procedures for that. Um, we've just finished taking care of them uh, for next year. I do know that there are some families who have moved during this time. And so what we have done is said, uh, so let's say you were attending Parkland, your children were attending there, and now you've moved to the south end of town and you really should be attending J.R. Walcoff or Emirato School. Well, you don't know any of those teachers and yet you're already living there. So what we've asked is that will be your school for next year. Uh, but for this year, Parkland will take care of your learning packages because those are teachers you know. And that would be the best for our children. We want to make sure that they are in contact with people who know them. Uh, I know that their new teachers will certainly take care of them. That's not a problem, but they don't know them at all. So we wanted to make sure of that. Thank you. So there is a second question here if you want to read that one. Sure. I'm curious to know about next year. So are we. <laughs> um, is school starting early? That's a really good question. The province has said that they will tell us really soon. And as soon as we know that, I'm sure that they will let all of the province know that as well. And then once we know, then we can start planning for that. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware, but the province has mandated years ago that we only start school after Labor Day. And so this is, they're considering a change just for this year because we've missed so much school. Uh, and then the next part of that question is, will there be less hours during the day or learning packages for home learning? That's a really good question. Uh, we don't know the answer to that, except that we do know that the province is really hoping and planning for regular uh, school in fall, but I, I don't know what that answer will be, and I don't think that the province does at this point. And I see the next question there is pretty much um, pertaining to the previous one. Is there a contingency plan for September in the case that schools can't open, or if parents aren't comfortable with sending their K-8 to students back to school? Um, at this point, we are waiting for direction from the province. Um, we are mandated to follow their lead on those things. And so as soon as they tell us what that looks like, we will be working hard to put a plan into action. We're already kind of working with this plan so that we're prepared for whatever they might bring up, uh, but it is their choice and then we have to follow from there. Joanne, you wanna add anything to that? Well, that, that, sounds, uh, that sounds right to me. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it, it's, um, Things have changed so quickly, and, and I'm sure you've experienced that at home too. Um, we are always watching the news and, and we're listening and, and trying to understand. And even I'm sure in the countries uh, back home where you may be, where you're thinking of where you um, have come from, other countries, you're watching the news and wondering. And, uh, and we are 
in the same situation. We're watching and waiting to hear. Um, as soon as we hear things, we try to make sure that our, our parents are aware that we're working on those plans for next year. So we just don't okay. have any more information at this point. Yeah, and so like for instance, the plan starting June 1st, we were officially told on Wednesday <laughs> that that will be happening. And so the plan is being sent out uh, by all of our schools today. Some of you will have received that information already, um, but it is going to be on our website. It probably already is on our website uh, and your schools will be sending that information out as well. No, thank you very much. That's a good answer. Um, there is another question about high school. Um, if you wanna take a look at that. Okay, I'm not quite sure I understand. I'll, I'll read it. Maybe Joanne can help me understand it too. For senior high, is it like strands? I'm not quite sure what that means. Curious because my son has completed 11th grade and his strand is arts and design. I wonder if they're meaning major. Um, Alessia, unless you have a perspective from um, that maybe we're not fully aware of, I would assume they would mean like they're majoring in arts and design and things like that. Um, Mm. Vocational, it kind of maybe is tagged onto a question I have, and I might answer both. Uh, mm -hmm. Vocational, like understanding um, uh, shop, you know, um, metal and welding classes and things like that. Um, how is that affected by the current situation? I'm thinking that might be similar to what they're asking. And if it's wrong, um, feel free to clarify. Anna, if you could do that for us, that would help a lot. For sure. Joanne, you want to answer that? Or should I? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I don't know how many of you are aware of um, our Garden Valley School Division high school students are able to join a group called the Red River Technical Vocational Area, or for simple, we call it RRTVA, much easier. And what that is, is a group of high schools from the area. So Morden, Winkler, Altona, oh boy, uh, Latelier, Morris, feel like I'm missing one, <laughs> uh, but lots of groups of us because there's no way one high school can afford to have all of the different programs. So we have welding, um, diesel mechanics, auto mechanics, painting of vehicles, um, carpentry, cooking and baking, hairstyling and aesthetics. Uh, what else? We, uh, we used to have drama. We don't have that anymore. Electric. Uh, so you can get, uh, you can become you can do your apprenticeship towards your being an electrician. Um, plumbing as well, that's a new one. Anything else I'm missing there, Joanne? I think you covered them all. <laughs> okay, so that goes from grade 10 to 12. Uh, if that is not an area that you would be interested in, uh, okay, and I'm just noticing Anna's question about arts and design. We do have drafting as well. That's not part of our RTVA. That is just part of our high school's uh, programming. And uh, okay, Anna's just, strands are courses for university and college. Okay, so yeah, that's a good question to ask. We do have different levels. Uh, so for instance, in math, we have essential math, which is your everyday living kind of math. And then we have the uh, different level called pre-calculus applied math, and those would be university level maths. Uh, we also have the same thing for um, English language arts. And then social studies and science, that's for everybody. Um, so you might go into a specific area and that would have a strand, certainly like business ed courses, um, those kinds of things. And if you call the high school, whichever high school you should be attending, uh, they would be able to tell you a lot of information. Um, their principal and vice principal would be helpful as would their guidance counselors because that's what they work with all the time. So they would be happy to help. Okay, so just to go back on vocational, um, is that changed at all for September? As far as we're aware of, no, but I know that the one question that has been asked a lot is the courses where you're taking an apprenticeship and the hours that you have to actually, you know, physically do. So if you're uh, in electrical, you have to physically do those hours of electrical work that's the only way you can get your apprenticeship hours to become an apprentice. And so um, apprenticeship has been very fussy about that. 
Um, we're hoping that they will open it up now for the rest of June to, to allow those students to get some more of their hours. We're not allowed to unless they open that up to us. So we're assuming that everything will be back to normal in September. But again, that depends on what the government decides on. That doesn't help a lot, but <laughs> maybe that gives you at least some information. I think it gives some hope that, you know, things hopefully will continue back to normal yet. And yeah, and the government, that is their goal. They're really hoping that we will all be back to school as normal, although obviously I don't think it'll be quite as normal. I think we'll have to be mindful of washing hands and um, sharing less and those kinds of things. But if we can have everybody back at school, that's what the goal is. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump back to a question I have here. Mm -hmm. And then there is another one on Zoom, but I'll ask this one, just cause you talked about uh, washing hands, things might look a little differently. Mm -hmm. um, so come September, uh, will my child require to bring their own hand sanitizer or a mask? Is that something I should prepare for? That is a great question. Uh, at this point, we're not sure about that. Um, I've heard from other places, I have a friend who teaches in British Columbia and they're required to wear masks and uh, they've all, they're trying to figure that out. Uh, we have not been instructed on that at this point. I know that um, now with opening, all of our schools are working to have hand, sin hand sanitizers available, uh, cleaning desks all the time, cleaning the bathrooms all the time, cleaning all the door handles and everything. Um, so that will still be in place in fall. Um, how that will look for your child coming to school, bringing things, I'm not sure. Um, but we will certainly make sure that that news is shared ahead of time. As soon as we're aware of it, we will share it. Very good question. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget about that. Uh, so there is a question on Zoom here when you have a moment. Um, it says, when my child starts grade one, will she have a desk? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, it, you know, we wondered about that. Um, all of our K-3, to well, probably K-4 to classrooms don't have desks. Well, I shouldn't say all, but almost every single one. So to now have a desk, that would be difficult since we don't have desks in stock anywhere. So um, if we're required to make sure everybody is separated, we're going to have to figure out how to do that in a new way. Um, and that might mean um, longer tables with one child at one end and one child at the other. Uh, not sure, but you're, if, if we're still at the stage where everybody needs to be separated, they will be. Uh, we will do our absolute best to keep every child safe. Sounds good. Alessia, I noticed here that you have something to add. You're okay. muted right now, so just, uh, just a heads up. I know. No, I don't. I'm just waiting for some uh, questions and I'm asking our staff as well if they have any questions. So okay, sounds good. No, then, it's a, then it's an error on my end, so I apologize. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, can I, this is a question from uh, one of our clients, uh, can my family play on your playgrounds during the summer? Yes, they certainly may and they are welcome to. Uh, the one thing that we would ask is that you wash your children's hands and yours before you use the structure. Make sure that you keep distance from anybody else who's not in your family. And when you leave and go home, wash your hands again. Um, because that's the only way we can keep people safe. But uh, if you've listened to the public health officer, he is encouraging people to be outside, um, get kids playing. That's part of being healthy. And that's part of normal life. So if we can provide as much normalcy as we can, while being safe, we certainly want to do that. Great answer. That's what I was hoping for. My kids are excited to just bike over to the playground. Yeah, I live right by a park and you see all of those kids waiting to play on the playground. So I'm and glad we have that they limited can. parks already, right? So if we can yes. expand and play in other playgrounds, it just helps alleviate the, the amount of kids all at one, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, great. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so some of this is just focused on more of some of the newcomer, um, I guess, struggles, but also I feel like it, it kind of expands to a lot of parent struggles in the sense that they have a hard time um, helping their kids with their schoolwork. Uh, for myself, my daughter's in grade seven, and I haven't used grade seven math since grade seven. And I always make the joke, to, and I say to her, you remember, uh, you say you're never going to use this when you're older? Yeah, don't do that. Don't yeah, say it. Exactly. Because That's you might right. have to teach your child this one day, so you better yeah. be 
imagine. <laughs> um, and so uh, just wanting to see how parents can access extra help for themselves to be able yeah. to help their kids. Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of teachers uh, telling me that they are helping parents um, and teaching them. Um, certainly, they are, our, our teachers are always available to assist you during the school hours. I know that for most of us, we haven't done grade seven math since we were in grade seven, and it's changed a lot since then, or at least the way it's taught has changed a lot. And so sometimes we have to figure out what in the world they're talking about. Um, there are also a few websites that have been very helpful. Um, there's some, there's one called TeacherTube instead of YouTube, and that is to help you. It's actually teachers teaching lessons on um, how to teach somebody those particular topics. Uh, there's a lot of other online places where you can go for help, but check with your child's teacher. They will be happy to help. They are great. I know they've been checking in even with us parents as well as the kids, and that's been great. Yeah. Uh, I will add that resource to our, uh, when we do post this, just as a, as a link uh, that people can explore. Um, but also, again, ask your teachers, I agree. They, they yeah, can that, I would go there first because the teachers are happy to help. I know I've heard many teachers concerned because they're feeling for parents who this isn't something that you normally do. And probably some of you are trying to do your own job at home. And so it's kind of hard to do both at the same time. So they are happy to help. That's good. It kind of ties into the next question. Um, it says, I am new to Canada. Will my child struggle with not getting a normal start to their current grades education? So mm -hmm. if they're coming in during COVID-19 and they are um, new to Canada and now they're gonna go to the next grade without having much time in the current grade. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's important to remember that all of our kids are going to be back in September, having missed all of these months of school. And although we've been, uh, parents have been working hard with them at home, it's still going to be everybody coming back to school, not quite sure about how things are and, and where things are at. So our teachers will work with all of the kids um, and they will go into, into the new year knowing that everybody uh, is at a different place and everybody will need to be um, taken care of so that they are able to start from where they are. And uh, we're already working with our teachers on that so that they'll be prepared. Teachers have got all sorts of amazing plans already in place uh, just to be prepared for each child. And that's the thing, it, we don't go into school thinking, well, the whole class has to be the same because none of us are the same. We don't teach that way anymore. Um, we teach child to child, uh, you know, each child has an important part and we need to teach to their learning. Joanne, yeah, you do a great job. Uh, I was just going to say we can, sometimes we uh, feel like we've lost some time that they maybe um, haven't acquired English yet and they still want to uh, build on those English skills mm -hmm. and they might feel like, I wish we had this time. But um, I have found that students, whether they're entering um, um, an English speaking school in, in grade one or grade five or grade 10, it's amazing how even, even at uh, the higher levels, um, high school or junior high, it's amazing how quickly they are still even picking up the language, even at an older age. And uh, schools are very accommodating and they will take those, those children, regardless of what kind of language skills they're coming with, and, and while you feel like you may have missed a valuable time, mm -hmm. um, they'll gain that time back. And, they will. and uh, the teachers will meet them right where they're at. Yeah, and our school division works really hard with students who come in uh, with no English or small amount of English. Uh, they work really hard to help them with their English skills so that they can keep up with the rest of the class. Yeah, you guys do a great job. And children, newcomer kids are extremely resilient. They, they are. And I have, just from even the kids that I have met, has just, it's amazing how quickly a couple months, you know, goes by and they're, they're, just, <laughs> everything's sticking. Yeah, very true. Um, that's good. Uh, I have one more question here. Um, and I guess it kind of was answered in the sense of uh, the strands. And we talked a little bit about that. But will this affect my child's ability to apply for post-secondary education? So I'm assuming this is from mm -hmm. a, parent of a grade 12 student who now is looking at graduating 
um, credits are really important and I think they feel like the last few months have they've kind of lost a little bit um, or the, the quality of education in which they would have gotten in school does that affect their post-secondary education applications or will that that's a very good question and that is something that um, we as school divisions have been pushing for information on because our students need to be able to be in the universities where they are heading to um, and so the province has actually been working together with the universities to make sure that everything should be aligned so that they can still uh, get in. Uh, I know that they still have to have good marks, but um, the students who, in, at least in our experience, students who are working towards university have been working hard um, with their teachers and should be fine. Um, you could certainly call the university that you're hoping to get into and ask them more questions, but the province has been working together with the universities to make sure this works for them. That's great. Um, and then just one last one on my list here is kindergarten transition. I'm assuming if it really depends on the province, we know that, that things may change, um, but we know kids transition into kindergarten sometimes even before the school year ends. Mm -hmm. And so has that, how is that looking for those parents coming into the kindergarten year? That's a good question. I know that each school kind of has their own plan of how that will work. Um, our, our goal currently is to just get our students in at least once. Um, but we certainly want to find a way for our preschoolers coming into kindergarten to make their way in. Um, some of our schools are going to try and get them in once now in June. And if they're not able to, they will do that in August. But we want each of those children to at least have walked through and met their teacher. That's a huge thing for them is, who is that person who's gonna be taking care of me? And what room is it going to be in? So that will be part of transition as well. Joanne, do you wanna add anything to that? I was gonna say, uh, just like you said, uh, Janice, that, that our schools, I don't think they're all going to approach this exactly the same. I know that some of them, uh, like Janice said, are going to try to, um, to welcome preschoolers, uh, those that are age four, age five, to come in once in this time to meet the teacher. But if that is not possible, um, there is a really good staggered start when we begin at the beginning of September. And that will be an opportunity to meet the teacher in the classroom. And that's a one-on-one -on -one situation where it's just the parent, the student, and the teacher. That's it. And you get to walk around the classroom, um, ask questions, and, and it's a great, it's a, and they've even talked about lengthening that time maybe for this one year so that they have even a little more time with the teacher just with it one student. So I think that will be, that will, although it would be ideal to do that now, um, that may not be the case in every school. So, but that's something to look forward to in September that there will definitely be a time with the teacher then. And every school has that at the start of the school year. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good answers you guys have given. Um, I don't have any questions. Uh, I was actually very happy with the questions I got from Ian, and, and I was really glad with the answers you guys provided. Um, I'm just going to just make a call out if anybody else has any questions to provide Joanne and Janice. Um, feel free to use the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen or the chat option. Uh, we'll just give another 30 seconds or so here to see if anybody else has questions. I just got a reply from our staff and some clients that they got a call from their teachers mm -hmm. and they got um, all beautifully explained so they know it all and thank you very much for the yeah. good work, thank you. That's good. Our, we have worked really hard to make it as clear and as easy as possible and that's why the schools or the classroom teachers will be contacting you just to make sure everybody understands it. Yeah. That's awesome. Even myself, I just got an email as well from a teacher. So oh, thank good. you. That's great. I'm glad. I think, I think I did too, actually. So funny. <laughs> Go check your names. Yeah. We both have, I know, we both have kids in, our, in the Garden Valley School Division and they're That's really great. diligent. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really convenient, I know, uh, from my experience, that the kids have emails and have access to connecting with other students, yeah. other teachers. Uh, my daughter was able to find her grade uh, three teacher's email address, and so she contacted her. 
<laughs> Good. Hi. And uh, it's, it's, the technology has been such a benefit uh, mm -hmm. through a time like this for students. Um, and I like the fact that there's a balance of screen time and paper, you know, physical paper time. Mm -hmm. um, so kids, parents aren't feeling like their kids are getting too much of one thing and not That's enough. That's right. Yeah, and, and we, we want to be careful with our children, right? Being online. Um, the more online you are, the more you have to watch. So uh, we want to make sure that their learning is, is really good and as best as we're able to do in distance. And you guys have tons of great resources accessible, mm -hmm. uh, Seesaw and um, Epic, uh, yeah. things like that that are available for times like this are really important. So I appreciate you guys uh, thinking creatively and, and, and ensuring this is going as well as you can. Yeah, I got an email from Cindy Klansky. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, that's great. Um, I'm just going to mute for just one moment here. I have a couple attendants here in the office. I'm just going to check with them if they have questions. So it turns out you guys actually answered those questions that they had. So I Good. appreciate it. Um, <laughs> That's great. Uh, Alessia, do you have anything else to add or any questions that you've gotten during this time? Nope. Everybody's very happy. <laughs> great. Yes. All right. Well, thank you again, guys, for, for taking your time out of your busy schedules and making this happen. Um, we're hitting the home stretch to the end of the year, and it just feels good to hear um, some positive news, and hopefully we can mm -hmm. uh, uh, get back on some normal sleep come September. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah, that would be good for all of us, right? Yeah. And yeah. so if, if things do change again, um, we may uh, have you guys back again just to do another update to be able to address questions again. Uh, but for now, we uh, will end with this. And yeah. Thanks so very much. Thanks for the opportunity. It was you're great welcome. to answer yeah. those questions. And you're always welcome to call and ask as well. So just a, a reminder, this uh, record, I mean, this webinar was recorded. It will be uh, put on uh, our social media pages as well as accessible by email if someone would like to request to view it. Um, so if you missed it or you have friends that could benefit from hearing this information, please let us know. Um, you can email Regional Connections at info at regionalconnections.ca. Um, or yeah, again, you can reach out to Janice or uh, Joanne and I'm sure they would uh, be willing to direct you as well. Yeah, and your schools would be happy to answer as well. I know that they are getting lots of questions and they've got a lot of information and they'd be happy to help. Great. All right, we'll sign off. Have a great day, guys. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks, we'll everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia.